breeding zone, I believe, for my final video um, for today. I'm going to touch on a subject that I very seldom have done via video, um, and that's music. Um, in this case, I'm specifically going to talk about uh, a little bit about my favorite um, rock and roll band, uh, Queen. Now, um, being a, a, a dude born and raised um, um, under Motown's umbrella, uh, one might wonder, you know, where where my fascination with Queen would even begin. Um, I came up listening to Smokey Robinson and um, Stevie Wonder and the Four Tops and the Supremes and Aretha Franklin and a whole host of others, you know. Um, of course, there was the music I was listening to um, while going to school. Uh, amongst my peers, you know, where we were listening to the Silvers and uh, the Jackson Five and um, uh, Billy Preston and a number of others. Um, but it wasn't too long before I started noticing. Uh, certain differences in uh, musical stylings and uh, something that I'll talk about in a later video um, but I'll just touch on it here is that um, my eyes were beginning to open um, to the sound of rock and roll music um, when I heard such artists as Jimi Hendrix, um, Bob Seger, and uh, believe it or not, Donna Summer. And it wasn't too long after that um, that I saw a movie that almost relished in how bad it was, which um, um, I enjoyed it nonetheless, which was um, Flash Gordon. And um, the, the main folks that did the soundtrack to that movie was Queen. And uh, I think it was just the harmonies that kind of captivated me. Um, then I read something in Rolling Stone, I believe it was, where Michael Jackson was kind of hyping um, Another One Bites the Dust. He was really digging that song, and uh, having heard that song, um, I probably would have known this had I not um, um, seen um, a reporter right on this subject. But it was obvious that the bass line from Another One Bites the Dust was from a, um, a Queen song. I'm not a Queen song, a Chic song, which is an R&B band. And if I'm not mistaken, which I could be, I think the song was Good Times. Um, but I could be wrong on that. Um, but it was definitely it was definitely a chic song. And what Queen did with that beat and bass line was take it out of this world. And then, um, I don't know, somewhere along the line I heard um, Bohemian Rhapsody. And... Um, it just blown away. I think that's probably when I became a fan. If, it, if that wasn't the case, then what certainly um, drove me over the edge was uh, Live Aid. Because I think Queen, more than any act um, on the dais, Queen owned that audience. Um, Especially when they were playing like Radio Gaga, I was like, "Damn, you know." Um, Freddie Mercury's voice, the harmonies between the four 
Brian May, Brian May's screeching guitar, uh, the beats, the bass line, everything just fit together with this group, and I don't think any other group has come close. Not the Rolling Stones, not Led Zeppelin, um, not the Who, uh, not ACDC, not a number of acts who were um, very prolific in their writings. Um, as a matter of fact, I think the only artist that has covered as much musical territory as Queen and has done it seamlessly is another member of royalty who also happens to be my favorite performer, and that's Prince. Um, but Queen will always be, in my view, um, um, just the greatest rock and roll band um, that's ever been, and in my mind's eye, ever will be. But anyway, for those of you out there who have um, musical leanings, regardless of, of um, genre, regardless of um, style, um, anything you care to share by way of comment or video response is um, welcome. And um, until next time, night out.